Welcome back, this is Dar Phyllis. This is our first episode of a Let's Play on Direwolf 20 version 1.5. Uh, for those of you who have been following, we were doing a Feed the Beast Ultimate Let's Play for a while there. Uh, but as you see, there was a little bit of an oops on the server. And as such, we had to start over. With Direwolf having released a new version of his mod pack, we decided to switch the mod pack and move the Let's Play over to the Blackrock server. If you're wondering who I mean by we, I'm talking, of course, about Blackrock, also known as Guy, Tree Angel, Tavian, and Rose. We have a few other people who join us on occasion. At Rose's request, any time you hear, it means somebody has used someone's real name. It is not an indication of swearing. And finally, we've opted to skip the finding of a house and the initial resource gathering, so you'll see that I've already dug out a section for a house and have some diamonds and other resources already available, and it's just we found all this prior to starting. Rose, Tree, Tav, and Guy also all have houses scattered throughout the world, and we will be visiting them over time to check out what they've done. So we're building some power, and what we're doing here is we've got three iron furnaces with diamond pipes underneath them and a piece of sandstone pipe on the side of one of the iron furnaces to keep items from going into it. What we're going to basically do is loop the items from a harvester and planter uh, through a pipe on the top, dropping the wood down into the iron furnaces, and then at the bottom, we're going to send the charcoal up into the bottom of the iron furnace to fuel the iron furnace. Now we're also going to have to add some wooden pipes and redstone engines to pull the items out of the iron furnaces and send them back into the pipes so that they will feed into the iron furnaces, but that's relatively minor. And the actual layout here, as you can see, is actually really quite simple. So I'm going to cut here a little bit and put some of this together, and we'll be back in a few minutes. Well, hang on. We'll just keep going. I don't want this one to join to the other two and cause them to go every which direction, so I'm just going to drop it in at the bottom instead of the top. Shouldn't cause any major issues. Fill these back in because I don't need this trench. Redstone torches for power for the fur or for the engines. Take our redstone engines and put them up here. There we go. Now charcoal should come out of those iron furnaces once they have some charcoal. Okay, so we're going to put in a little bit of sandstone pipe here because we're going to put a generator down underneath this pipe. And we're going to do that so that the overflow charcoal after the iron furnaces are full will go into the generator to generate EU for us. And we're going to block off all the other sides of the diamond pipe except for the way we want stuff to go and then the, the charcoal going down into the powered furnace. Charcoal goes in the top of the generator, right? I said powered furnace again, didn't I? <coughs> My mistake. Generator. So I'll put the generator down there. Now we're going to prime the iron furnaces with a little bit of charcoal or coal here, just so they have something to start burning with right away as soon as the planter and harvester turn on. The old question is the chicken or the egg, which came first? We don't have power, but we need power. So we're going to use this clockwork engine. We're just going to wind it up here a little bit to power the harvester real quick to get it to cut down some stuff and see if everything works as expected that we've got in so far. Now, it's not going to generate a ton of power, as you can see, but it's going to generate enough that eventually we should start to get some of it cutting down and there we go, some saplings. So let's go downstairs and see what's going on here. Do, 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 do. All right. So it's going to go nowhere because we haven't connected it to anything. Oopsie. Let's fix that. While we fix the issue of where stuff's going, let's open up these diamond pipes and take some wood that we've already kind of collected and put it in these diamond pipes so that we send it down into these iron furnaces to turn into charcoal. That way, when we actually do have the pipes connected correctly, it will actually send stuff in the correct directions. 
Okay, so I need some emeralds in order to make the area of effect of my harvester larger. So I'm going to trade with this villager and just get some emeralds from him. Uh, not many. Again, just needed to make the upgrade for the harvester, and I'm going to need something to make an upgrade for the planter as well. But we'll come to that later. Right now, I just need these emeralds. Now, real quickly, uh, you may have noticed that I have these villagers behind bars. I went to a village with a portal gun, and I brought them all over here and locked them up so that they wouldn't get killed by mobs, and that it would be easier for me to find them and trade with them when I needed them. So they now live in the safety of the tree as long as I don't light the tree on fire from the bottom and burn them to death like I did earlier. But we don't talk about that. To make the ML upgrade, we're going to just take a gold nugget and a couple pieces of redstone, some raw plastic, and three emeralds across the top. And there's our little upgrade. Now we're going to run over to our harvester and put that in there because we want it to have the largest possible range for harvesting. And that's all there is to it. Drop that in there, and now the range area will affect is much larger. You limit the ceiling height, your trees will only grow that high, right? Uh, yep. Yes, pretty much. Okay. Here we can see the harvester quickly grabbing some of the grass uh, a little further out, so we know the range upgrade is working, and we don't have to worry about clearing the grass from this level because the harvest will do it for us. So we just need to finish flattening out this terrain. Now we're just going to figure out where we should place the planter in our new flattened area. So I'll just dig this little hole here so when we're downstairs we can dig down into it. So we've tunneled our way underneath the hole that we just dug upstairs. And you can see we look up and we see the great outdoors. I'm going to put a piece of dirt back up there because the planter has to be down one level. I want to put in our planter right there. And now we just need to connect it to the pipes and power. So we're going to put a diamond pipe right underneath the planter, and then we're going to configure it with the sapling uh, for the trees, and then just continue to connect this back to the harvester pipe so that the harvester will pass through to the planter. Now we're going to continue the chain of pipes along through this tunnel that's the planter right there and we're going to bring it all the way around back to the top pipe for the iron furnaces. The system is designed so that any overflow from the power generation will come up into this chest and go through the insertion pipe. The sandstone pipe prevents that second piece from connecting, and that's a void pipe, which I'm going to move just because I don't like the way this looks back into the wall but any overflow will go into the void pipe and be destroyed. That way, I won't have items spilling all over the place if this chest gets full, which it's going to get full, and I'm not going to empty it on a very regular basis. For the time being, this is going to be the easiest way to deal with it. Eventually, I will have it go into an ME system or some other mass storage. Now to check the condition of this diamond pipe, make sure it's right. Good, nothing can come back out this way in case there's an overflow or charcoal. Now for any good power system, we need something to conduct power. We're going to make some copper cable, and we're just going to take our rubber bar and some copper. There we go. If you have leftover copper wire, you can put the copper wire with rubber in there just like this and get a little more copper cable. Very handy trick. We now need to actually make our generator, so we have to look up the recipe. And as you can see, we can either make one with a rebattery and an iron furnace or a rebattery and a regular furnace. And depending on which way we go, we either need to refine our machine blocks. Now, machine blocks are made with eight refined iron, so we've got to make some refined iron. I don't have any at the moment. And we need to get some a rebattery made, which is just tin, redstone, a piece of copper cable. So we'll get that going. And then uh, we need, of course, a furnace. So we'll be back in just a few moments. Now, to make our rebattery, we're going to take a little bit of redstone. Yeah, that's not the right spot for it. There we go. And there. And then we're going to take some tin and put it along the sides. And one of our copper cables, put it up at the top, there's our rebattery. We also need an iron furnace. So we're going to take this refined iron and just spread it just like this, like a chest. And there's our iron furnace. We'll put that there. And we don't have enough for refined iron. There we go. Now we can put our refined our iron furnace and refined iron across the middle and our rebattery. And there is our generator. Now we'll just put our generator right here. Make sure that this is configured correctly with charcoal going down into it some charcoal in here. Get these out of our way. And run a little cable. 
table from point A to B. All right, so now that should start generating as soon as it gets some charcoal. Now we need to get power to this as well, so we're just going to make a little way for the cable to run. And we will just run the cable right off of this. And we'll just come straight down here, across here. Uh, oops. Well, gotta make some more cable. Put the yeah, this doesn't go on the top. It's on the bottom. That doesn't work. Uh, oops. Now let's take that out and. Now, if this were geothermal, that would have been really bad to, to break it with a pickaxe, but because this is a standard generator, I'm not quite as worried about it. But we'll put it up here and reconfigure this to put the charcoal down into the, or up into the bottom of it, and then block off the bottom. That should solve that problem. And I can take some of this cable out of here now. Get this back. I need to get in there, so let me move that. Alright, to fill this back in. There we go. Some cable up here. Try it there. that there. Alright, so that's all connected to the generator. Now we should come back here and reconnect to this missing cable piece. And now the harvester and planter are both connected to power once it starts actually generating. Right? Okay. Now we're going to test the system by putting some wood into the iron furnaces manually and just make sure that the charcoal flows the way we want it to and that everything starts working hopefully correctly. We also put a little charcoal in the bottom of the generator so that we can see the machine start working off of the EU. As you can see, it's generating EU. And we're getting some sludge. We may have to do something about that. But the planter itself is already planted. It's building up power from its internal battery, which is good. The generator is generating and will fill up its internal tank eventually. Put a little more charcoal in here, and you can see the internal tanks can go up. As the planter and harvester will only draw power when they need it, or their internal reserve is a little low. So that's going to run for a little while. Now we can see that there's charcoal coming out of the iron furnace here, being piped up. It goes into the top pipe, comes back down around, and it doesn't go into the iron furnace again because the sandstone pipe on the side it doesn't connect to machines. So it goes down, drops rather goes up into the bottom of the iron furnaces as needed for fuel and then eventually works its way down to the generator to make power which is exactly way the way the system is supposed to work. This may not be enough uh, long term to really get things going but it's a good basic start. It's a self-powered system. I won't have to do anything for maintenance on any of this. There's no breaking parts, no blades to be replaced. Redstone engines don't explode so I don't really have to worry about them. And it's a nice, solid, basic power generation system. If you have a larger farm, you can hook up multiple generators and more iron furnaces and really generate a lot more power and not have to worry about it. It's fairly self-sustaining. At some point, we may build a larger one underground that will run you know, a full, full farm of, and have a few harvesters involved in picking all the trees. But for now, that is going to do it for us. 
I came upstairs looking for a forest, or at least a bunch of saplings planted, and I be it to be harvested, and I didn't find them. And the reason being, you see one planted there, the planter is one level too high, so it's not lined up properly with the harvester in order for the stuff it's planting to harvest. It needs to be one block underneath the level. Well, I need to have a block of dirt above it or a layer of dirt above it for it to plant on, and I have it not quite low enough based off of where the harvester is. So I have to move it down a floor. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this and take a quick look at what the easiest way to fix this is. Because it's got to come down one. So we'll take this and we'll just put it put sandstone here to stop stuff from going into it and put the planter right where's my planter there there okay now just to reconfigure this and move the saplings into the right spot take that out put it back in here Put some saplings in here, and as you can see, it already planted that sapling, so we should have sapling upstairs ready to grow. The planter's been planted in small areas. We're going to make an upgrade with some copper, a uh, gold bucket, redstone, and raw plastic, and that will increase the range of the planter, not as much as the emerald upgrade, but it will increase it by, I think, six blocks, which is enough for our use because it'll it will make it. Uh, six on both sides, so 12, 15 blocks wide area. The emerald upgrade we put into the harvester increases the range by 11. So that ends up with, it starts with three, you add 11 to both sides, 22, 25 block area. So it's a huge area sideways for the harvester to be able to pick. What that means is we can manually plant items around the area of the planter and the harvester will pick them. So we can plant sugar cane, cactus and I think berry bushes around it and it will automatically gather them for us all through the same harvester. With the upgrade in place we can put more saplings in here and they'll plant right away which will just increase the amount of trees that hopefully the harvester will be able to cut down in a short amount of time. Now the filter area over here on the left hand side I'm going to put some different things in here and I'll add them to the diamond pipe to go into the planter but it will allows me to control what's being planted where so it will break the planter's area up into these sections and plant them accordingly. So one planter actually can plant more than one type of item. So I've got, you know, seeds and trees and whatnot in there. And that you can actually plant different types of saplings as well. Somebody has asked me, well, can't this fill up with all of the one type of item, then it won't have any of the other seeds to plant? And the answer to that is, well, technically, yes. And there are ways around that with other machines and things. But if you start out with enough items in there, the planter very rarely runs out of a given stack after the initial plantation just because of the way things flow. And as you can see, it's planted both my, my, my uh, barley and wheat there, and it's planted a whole bunch of little saplings for me. And so as they grow, the harvester will pick them up. Now I'm going to move this torch. I don't like where it is. And that will give me a little bit of wheat production for food because I don't like starving. Now that the power system is working, I'm going to dig a separate access tunnel back into that room and seal up the doorway I had been using because that's actually part of my oreberry room which needs to be dark for the oreberries to grow. So I'm just going to seal, make a little tunnel here, seal this up. I know it's going to drive Tree Angel absolutely nuts because it's going to be kind of a spaghetti junction area. But until I revisit the ore room, the oreberry room and the magic room it's layout, uh, it's kind of an evil necessity. On the flip side of that coin, there should never really be a reason for anybody to come down here. So I'm not too worried about it being a mess. Having said that, I'm now going to just seal this all up. Until next time, guys, dig safe.